really thankful for the power of Jesus Christ, his ability to save yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Can we give him praise? Can we clap our hands one more time and honor him today? Thankful for that. Man, you can be seated really fast, if you will, for just a minute here this morning. I'm so thankful that it's always Jesus. It will always be Jesus. We're thankful for him today, and we celebrate what he's done, what he's doing, what he's going to do. We wanted to invite you tonight, today, or this week has been an incredible week of vacation Bible school, of serving, loving, appreciating, and loving on our families and our kids. It's been amazing this week to see the average uh, amount of kids that came on our campus were 100, was 160. Now there were more than that different nights, but the average was 160, and there were 115, 120 workers here every night. I just I wanted to do something really fast. If you worked, if you served this week at Vacation Bible School, I just wanted you to stand up. I just wanted people to see all the people. If you served in any way or capacity this week. Just all across the room. Amen. Just, just an awesome week. I made friends this week, new friends and old friends, and it was just an amazing week. Lives were touched. Young people gave their hearts to the Lord. We're believing. We're believing that as they give their heart to the Lord, their faith stays in Him, and they serve them the rest of their life. How many believe the Bible, that He's able to keep them until that day? So I believe that today. So we're so thankful for that. Tonight concludes with our VBS program. It's going to be incredible. They've been working on it. Funny skits and songs and it will culminate with some refreshments and fun stuff for the kids in the gym. So we want you to come and be a part of that and uh, we're so thankful once again for just an incredible powerful week. A week we believe will change our church forever. This week that was. It was an incredible time. So we're so thankful for that. If you would, if you'd stand your feet and welcome one another into God's house today. If you're visiting today, we want to tell you something we believe. We believe you're home. And so we want you to get involved, get to know each other. Welcome one another into God's house. I just want to stand in Jesus' name. I just want to stand. Your word proclaim. No matter what comes my way, no matter what people say, I just want to stay. I just want to stay in Jesus' name. I just want to stay. Life. 
prayer this morning, we'd like to invite you to come. The staff is going to come and pray for you. We believe in the power of healing. By his stripes we are healed. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back, way back on Calvary, I'm talking about the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. It's power, oh, because it reaches, it reaches to the highest mountain. Come on, choir, sing it. Oh, and it flows, it flows to the lowest valley. Talk about the blood. I want you to put your hands together and give him great praise this morning. You know, if you were here Sunday night, 
the Lord laid it on my heart. He said, there's a message that's been neglected, but it's necessary for the church today. And it's all that they're singing this morning. I preached a message called Under the Blood. Gary was talking to me. He said, man, we've got, you've got to preach that again Sunday. I prayed over it. The Lord said, save it. So I'm going to save it. I'm gonna, I don't know when I'll preach it. I'm going to preach it again. If you were here Sunday night, is it all right if we preach on the blood again? All right. Power of God fell Sunday night. We had a great church, great service. Prayed over everything. You know, my mama used to do that. She'd plead the blood over everything. She pled the blood over her kids. She pled the blood over the garden. She pled the blood of Jesus over the house. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It used to be that we understood there was power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Nowadays, they tell us, oh, don't talk about all that. If you want to pack the house out, brother boy, if you want to pack a house out, you, you got to stay real sweet and don't talk about those ugly things. Don't talk about bloody things. Don't, how many of you know it was because of the blood sacrifice of Calvary's cross that you and I are redeemed today? We're saved today because of the blood. I'm healed today because of the blood. I'm re redeemed and the power of God is at work in my family and in my life because of the blood of Jesus. I am covered by the blood. When he comes, when the enemy comes looking down my street, when he wants to mess with me, I'm no match for him, but I love to look up right in square into the heavens and say, devil, get behind me. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you believe that today, one more time, give him great praise. Honor the power of God in your life. Are you thankful for the blood? Amen. Oh, and it reaches. Sing it out to the high. Yes, mountain, Lord, we love you this morning. Oh, when it flows to the lowest valley. No matter what you're going through, whether you're on the mountain or in the valley, the blood, that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. Won't you lift your hands and honor the Lord one more time? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is anyone thankful for the blood this morning? Amen. Power that set the sinner free and the same blood that we shout about this morning, the same blood that we're thankful for is the same blood we want to move over the nation of Israel. So let's join together in prayer this morning for them. Father, we're thankful. Lord, for this opportunity to be here this morning to praise you. Lord, and as one body and one mind and one accord, we lift up the precious nation of Israel to you. Lord, we pray the blood of Jesus Christ over that nation. We pray for peace and prosperity. Lord, we pray for wisdom for the leaders there. Lord, and that you would protect their borders and that you would be with them. Lord, and that your presence would be known in that place of the world, Father. Lord, and we turn our eyes here to our country. Lord, we pray for our nation, for our leaders, for our families, and for our church. Lord, because we know that there's power in the blood. And we know, Lord, that you want to see every sinner and every lost person come to the knowledge of that saving power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this morning. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, I'm excited to be in church this morning. Now I know what the, uh, amen, I know what the writer says when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was thrilled when I pulled up on the property. I was thrilled when I walked in and heard the music playing. I was excited when we got into the, the first service, and man, the power of the Lord was here, and I believe he's just here just as good in this service, and we're going to see a great move of God. How many of you come expecting a move of God? Amen. Oh, goodness, I just looked over and saw a friend of ours who's all the way up from Tornado Alley. <laughs> all the way from Oklahoma, the Southern Hills Church of God. Look who's here, Sister Beverly Jones. Stand up, Sister Jones, we love you. 
We honor you today and thank you for being with us. This is Jamie Bales and Cameron Jones' mom, and uh, she's here to set them straight, whatever they need st set straight on. So we love her, and whenever she comes, she's a special and honored guest, and we thank you for being here. So thankful that you're here. Thank you. I want to reiterate what Cameron said. Man, this week was so wonderful. Every night coming in here and seeing, well, I didn't hear every night. I uh, had a few birthday dinners I had to go to. Thank you again for all the birthday wishes and all the um, uh cards and, and just comments and the pecan pie I got. Thank you so much. It's just precious. But I love you all and, and you really, uh, you just, you bless me. And um, I'm thankful. I, I actually got a letter from Facebook. They sent me a letter saying congratulations on all the comments that I got for my birthday. So I thought that was pretty, I never got a letter from Facebook before. They wished me a happy birthday. <laughs> but I, I appreciate that so much. But it was good to see all the kids here and to see them running around and laughing and praying and singing and celebrating and all of the workers, thank you so much. You don't even know, those kids will never forget this week. It will burn in their hearts for the rest of their lives. Amen. And I'm glad that we love family here. We love children here. And uh, that's, God blesses a church that will love its people and love children like we do. And uh, so thankful for all that. Now, I had heard a rumor that there were 10,000 kids here all week, so I, I don't know where they got their numbers. But it looked like it was jam, jam-packed. But so thankful for all that. And I don't know what in the world uh, Cameron and Whitney are doing. I mean, they, they are, I just feel sorry for them. My heart bleeds for them. They have gone through youth camps. They've been all the way over in Oklahoma. They took a whole team of young people and leaders and we're down there, and they came right back into vacation Bible school, worked all week long tirelessly, and now they're going to load the bus this afternoon, drive all the way down to Cleveland, Tennessee, because our kids won, I don't even know, how many entries do we have? How many? Seven? Seventeen? Seventeen entries in teen talent and going to national competition down in Cleveland, Tennessee. Wow. Amen. We're proud of our young people, proud of our leaders, and I am so proud of Cameron and Whitney for all that they do for our church. I just wanted to say, Cameron, we love you. We know you're exhausted. You need a vacation, and we'll work that out. But in the meantime, thank you for your unrelenting service and love to our families. I don't know how you do it or how you're even sitting up here today. You've got to be exhausted, but yet he still looks like the rock star that he is. We love you, Cameron Jones. Do you love Cameron and Whitney Jones? We're so thankful for them today. He's a, oh no. <laughs> God has truly blessed us with them, and we're so thankful for the work they do. I'm telling you, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. Let me just tell you, if you don't know it, he's the real deal, and we love him. Mom, you did good. You've got good kids, and Jamie and, and Cameron are good. And they chose good. Whitney and Brian are amazing people, and their families are awesome. We love them. Our wrestlers are getting ready to serve you, and as they come and, and are prepared, Today our, our offering is going to be going towards something that works missions for our young people, and that is the Youth World Evangelism Action, that's YWEA. Our Church of God denomination uh, raises funds, the youth ministry raises funds for, um, for Youth World Missions. So today our offering is going to go to help uh, curtail some of the costs that, that they entail in sending missionaries to work with teenagers and children around the world. So we want to help with them, our young people, help them to be able to, uh, to give to this mission project. So if you'll help us today with our gifts, that's where your loose offering is going to go. Of course, we're so thankful, and I don't want it to ever be taken for granted that we appreciate you who are faithful to pay your tithe. Leaders and pastors, they're expected to, and they do that in obedience to not only the, the Word of God, but they also do that in coordinates with their participation in ministry here but you you choose to obey God and I thank you for that I honor you that you trust God's word that you understand the way his kingdom economy works by you doing that the Bible's clear to say 
You give, and it will be given to you. How many would testify today and say, Pastor, since I've learned to be a giver, I have known blessing from God. Amen. Amen. So we're thankful for that today and honoring you. Coming, as soon as we're done praying, is two of our national teen talent um, entries. Um, we're going to, over the next several weeks, we want every one of them that go to national competition, we want them to present to you their piece. Um, because of all the mission trips and the things that happened, we kind of got behind a little bit. So we're starting this morning, and over the next several weeks, you're going to be hearing from our young people and seeing the, the talent that they're presenting at the national competition. Please keep them in prayer. Uh, all week long, our kids will be competing nationally, internationally, not just Ohio. They are literally going to Tennessee to compete internationally. Countries all over the world, the young people that have won their state and regionals will be coming together in Cleveland, and I'm just believing our kids will do their very best. That's all we require. Do their best, and when you hear when you hear them and you see them in action and their dramas and different things they do, you're going to be so proud of them. Today we have two entries. It's going to be, where's Luke? Luke and Chloe Baker are singing a duet at the national level, and they'll be competing, and they're going to come and blow you away with their entry. Um, I sat mesmerized in first service and can't wait for this one. And then uh, uh, the, national, uh, the, the state a winner for female vocalist of the entire state was our own Kaylee Childers. And so she's going to be coming to minister in song. She'll be singing her song that she's going to be competing with nationally and now against all the other female vocalists in the whole world. So you keep our young people in prayer as, again, we'll be showing you different entries every week for the next several weeks. And we're very proud of all of our young people. So they're going to come as soon as we pray. Father, as we come before you, we thank you. Lord, you continue to bless our efforts, our church for the work we do around the world. We thank you for missions. We thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for the way the church responded last Sunday to our missions giving to Paraguay. But Lord, this morning we're giving to youth world missions around the world. We ask you to use our gifts, touch to meet needs and to minister to the, to the projects they're in and the way that God it reaches people for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We honor you today and we're thankful to be a part Thank you for those who are faithful to pay their tithe in obedience to your word, but Lord, understanding the privilege and the honor that it is in our hearts and lives. Please bless them, touch them, as you continue to bless and favor our church and our community. So we desire to do nothing more than to present the light of Jesus Christ to every human being walking in this community. We thank you for the privilege to be used by you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Luke and Chloe.
How about that? Isn't that something? Now, if you want to know how that happens, we grow them up like that. Be here tonight. You'll see some in just a couple years. They're going to be coming up. Uh, I ran into a guy that came to Easter, and he was talking about some of our soloists around the church. He said, when that first gal came out and sang, I thought, that's the go-to girl. So then another one came out and sang. He said, well, that's the go-to girl. And then... That's the go-to guy. I'm telling you, we're going to praise the Lord and train him right. I love it that my mom and dad kept me in church even when I didn't want to go. Can you imagine me not wanting to go to church? Yeah, I was there. But they took me and put me in there and just invested so much in me. And I want to thank all the moms and dads who do that. And all the youth leaders, Miss Linda, on Wednesday night, she has a children's choir at 6.30. And it's a great thing. We've been doing generational worship. We're going to do that again in a few more weeks. Those kids, I love it when they're standing beside me and they're praising the Lord and worship. Oh. We're still going to sing a little more about the blood. It just isn't enough.
Amen. If you'd stand with me this morning. Thank you, Missy. Choir, thank you. Boy, doesn't Missy Boyer have a wonderful voice. <laughs> Anointed of the Lord. And she's anointed and singing. She can change your mind. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 3. As I said, I prayed and I asked the Lord what I would speak, for, would speak about this morning. I wanted to speak on the blood of Jesus Christ. Gary told me, he said, man, we're going to be singing about the blood. He had been ministered to on Sunday night. And he said, we're going to go that direction. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going to preach that message. But the Lord kept kept dealing with me that there was a word for someone here today and so I want to preach about the blood and I will because the Lord has given me a green light but not today right now someone in here today needs the word of the Lord that he has designed for you I don't know who you are I've already prayed about you and you're here and the devil would love to fight and he has but we are free in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lord Jesus, and we're going to give the message this today that is for you. So I want you to get ready. Because I, if I've ever stepped up here and I try to, I believe that every time I step up here, I've got the word of the Lord. But I'm telling you this morning that I've got a word for somebody. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to square it right from the very beginning with the title of the message. The, the Lord spoke into my spirit, and then I had to go put the message together. But he first said, I'm going to bring treasures out of their darkness I'm gonna bring treasures out of the dark place in your life today Isaiah chapter 45 verses 1 through 3 I'm gonna read from NLT and then I'm gonna read some from the NASB KJV new K, new KGV here this is what the Lord says to Cyrus his anointed one whose right hand he will empower before him Mighty kings will be paralyzed with fear. Their fortress gates will be opened never to shut again. This is what the Lord says. I will go before you, Cyrus, and I will level the mountains. I will smash down the gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. And I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness. Secret riches. I will do this so that you may know that I am the Lord the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. I want to go back and read just two verses in the, the New American Standard Bible. It says, I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bars. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places in order that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord this morning. Aren't you thankful he knows your name? Aren't you thankful he knows right where you are? He knows where you're going. And there, it can be the dark of night for you this morning, but I'm telling you, he knows right where you are, and he's got treasures coming out of the darkness that you find yourself in today. Can you say amen one more time? Give the Lord a grand applause of praise. Hallelujah. Father, we ask your blessings on the word of God. Speak to us. Challenge us by your Holy Spirit and let your word go forth in power to do the work you've intended. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I believe the text can be applied to all of God's anointed. Certainly everything that was said to Cyrus we know applies to Jesus Christ. He was the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. We know Jesus is anointed. But we also know that while Jesus was anointed by God and, and anointed with the Holy Spirit, we know that when he left the earth, he did what? He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 and verse 16. Now we know all Christians are anointed. You know what that means? That means that this word that I just read to you applies to your heart, to your life today, this morning, if you'll just understand that and comprehend what I just said to you. 
If you'll take that into your spirit and understand and know, treasures out of the dark season, the dark time of your life. Now, I know you're here today because I've already prayed you through. I know that you're here to receive this word from the Lord, but what you weren't expecting is that you thought that by going through this dark season and this time of confusion when you don't really understand what your next move is and what God is doing or where he's been, you're, you're looking at all your circumstances and you're not seeing anything that resembles God, that in the middle of all of that, God is working a plan to bring treasures of his wonderful bounty into your life and to mark you as an anointed which is favored and blessed of God. Do you believe that? Amen. We're in, we are the anointed. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21 says, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. God holds the hands of the anointed ones. But he look at what that verse says to us. It says that he opens the gates and they are not shut. How many of you need a few gates to open in your life? You need a few opportunities. You need a few things that have been closed or you feel barricaded from. You feel fortressed around. You need a few things to open up for you. God is working in the dark time of your life to open the gates and they are and will not be shut. It says that he will take the crooked places and make them straight. Have you got things that have not been going exactly right? You feel like you're you're moving left and right and you're not sure like a maze you're working through this crooked place that you find yourself in God is going to take the crooked places in your life and make them straight he's going to take the rough places that you are going through right now you need to receive this word I feel anointed to give it to you today the rough places in your life God is going to make them smooth God is working a plan in your life this morning do you have any crooked places it's a wonder, you, God breaks in pieces, it says, the gates of iron and brass, those things that have barricaded and prisoned, you, whether it's your family you're praying for, your, your daughters, your sons you're praying for, your husband and your wife, whatever the situation might be that you feel helpless in right now, hopeless in right now, God is going to completely smash through every gate that is holding you back from the treasures that God has for you. That's where we get the wonderful promise of Jesus when he spoke to Peter and Peter jumped up sitting around the fire and said, who are you? You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And in that moment, Jesus is thrilled and proud as he could be of Peter. He said, flesh and blood has not given that to you, has re not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. And he said, and on that truth, Peter, I am the Messiah. How many of you know there's no question? It's not another God or another road. It's one road and the one person, and that's the lamb of God. That's Jesus Christ. He's the way. And when we understand that, and we, we truly believe every word that he says, he went on to say, and on that truth, I'm gonna establish my church Build my church, and the gates of hell will not stop you. I could use the King James right there. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. But it basically means the gates of hell themselves, the very gates will not prevent you, will not stop you from marching right into a dark place to get the treasures that are there waiting for you and your family. I'm believing that this morning. Treasures in the darkness. God's going to bring treasures out of your dark season. You sit back and you say, God, I don't see anything. You're frustrated. You don't know what's going on. You, you, you can't figure out the plan. You're looking for signs to show you whether, whether God's even in this or not. Let me clue you in on something. If you belong to God, God's in it. I'll say that again. If you belong to God then you can trust and know today with a shout on your tongue that God is in it. He is in it whether the light is shining bright and you're on top of the mountain or you're weeping down in the valley in darkness. You know with every confidence of his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will go with you all the way to the end. God is with you. He's in it. And here's the word. I wrote this down. Your darkness has a treasure hidden in it, and God is bringing it to you. Well, about four people got that. 
Your darkness has a treasure in it. Oh, I'm frustrated, Pastor. I can't see clearly. I'm flying in the dark. You know, I thought of my brother-in-law, Steve, when, when I thought about this and I was writing in my notes. I thought, you know, he's a pilot and, you know, I'll ride with him during the day, but I, I don't know whether I would ride with him at night. You know, I have, a tr I have trouble with a pilot at night. He's a pilot and he flies great. He's very safe and he's very good. He's got many hours in and I'd go with him anywhere. But at night I might be a bit nervous because you can't see anything, you know. I, I like to see things and, and, and that gives me a grip on what I know and where I'm going. And I can figure out how close I am to home and to the runway. <laughs> but when he travels and he flies at night, he... He flies according to his instruments. He, he doesn't look down there to see landmarks. He doesn't look down there and watch the ground. He's not watching for all the things that will help him along his way. He's watching his instrumentation, the latitude and the longitude. And he's watching about how all of his meters and how all of it works. And he stays on, on track, you know, autopilot, so to speak. We've got all that. He knows exactly what he's supposed to do computer-wise to get himself to where he's going. You know, sometimes you and I have to understand that when we're walking by faith, I'm talking faith, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen, right? Sometimes when we're flying, if you will, by faith, we have to trust our instrumentation. And here's what I know. This is all the computer you'll ever need to get where you're going. God has got treasures in dark places and he'll get you home if you'll trust him and follow after him completely. But we've got to trust in the Lord, his anointed. You're frustrated. You're trusting the word. You're flying by the instruments and not by sight, by faith. While the season you're not seeing is yet fulfilled, you're moving slow, you're, you feel awkward, you feel unsure, you're not sure what's going on or where you're at or what life is going to give you next. You're, you're not even sure what steps to take. Do I go right or do I go left? You're, you're walking in a dark place. Isaiah talked about that when he said in chapter 50, he talked about how what do you do when you've obeyed God, when you've followed after God, you've, you've, you've followed the commandments of the Lord and you've trusted him in all your ways. What do you do when you see no light and you have no clear word? What do you do? Isaiah said, that's that's when you just trust in the name of the Lord and put all of your weight on who he is and his reputation. How many of you know he's never lost a battle yet? He's not lost a battle yet. God wins every time. And you and I, your, play, your faith is not misplaced. You may go through seasons of trouble. You may find yourself persecuted. I love the song that Kaylee sang this morning. I may ha have felt like I've lost my way many times in life and people have disappointed me. They do that all the time. But you know, I have found that I have never lost my hope, my faith, or my praise because God has always been there and he will always be there. That's his promise. Yeah. Treasures are coming to you. But man, sometimes it can, it can almost feel like you, you don't know how you're going to survive. You don't know how you're going to make it. And I believe there's people here today. I, I've already prayed this through. I believe that you're here and that you're going through a season of darkness. You're going through a time when you can't see what God is doing. And, and everything when you can't see what's going on, it, it manifests itself. It, things manifest. It gets larger than life. You, you know, you, you think things in the darkness you you see things you don't that are not normally there you it's just it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger sounds things you hear people saying things people not saying things you, it just becomes a, a struggle for you you know i i made the uh ex i gave the example in the first service about you know at nighttime you know living in my house you know if, if during the day if i hear a bar a dog barking I, i'm gonna think well there's a squirrel in the backyard or he's chasing a bird but at night, if I hear a dog barking, I'm like, burglar. <laughs> I'm looking out the windows. I'm looking out a ha-ha. Pull out my trusty little cap gun. <laughs> In the night, fear manifests itself. It's larger 
than it should be when we don't know what's going on, when we can't figure it out, when we can't see and we feel like we're walking in darkness. It's, it's in that time that the fear and the frustrations and all of the things that speak against the promises of God begin to manifest themselves against you and they begin to attack you and the enemy will use the fear and discouragement, the enemy's number one weapon against the child of God. Don't let the enemy discourage you. Don't let him get you down. You're never defeated. You are a con- conqueror through Christ. The blood of Christ causes you to be an overcomer, not just a few good times, but every time you get up in the morning, lay your head on your pillow at night, you belong to God and you're victorious. There are treasures in the darkness. We know this from God's word, but there are fears and awkwardness that comes in a season of not seeing. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the word of the Lord is that, that there are treasures in that darkness as well. Treasures, not treasure. That doesn't read, and I will give you treasure in darkness. He says, I will give you treasures. Treasures, Brian. You go through a season of cancer and you don't know what's gonna happen, telling you, you come out of that and you hold on and you stay true and God will bring treasures, left and right, things to celebrate, things that you would not have had otherwise. There's an intimacy that comes with those who will trust God in the dark place. Those are people that discover things about God. Brother Charlie is a man who's gone through a dark season, but I can guarantee you inside him, there's a soul of a man of God that is on fire and there is more of God in him now than there has ever been in all of his life. The power of the Lord is with him and God has given him strength and God will continue to strengthen him. And I believe his greatest day is yet to come, but God is doing things in the dark place. You have to trust it, you have to know it. And there are things that will only happen as we trust the Lord through the dark season. There's things you have to trust him with. There's a level of growth, a level of intimacy with God that only comes when you and I will trust him with those places that we can't see what he's doing. We know that God hides. He hides in the dark place. I want to give you a couple of things that that come through our walk with God. One of the first things that God gives you and I as a treasure is he gives his presence. His presence, the promise that he's there, the promise that he will never not be there. It may feel empty. It may feel like you're alone, but you are never alone. The Lord is with you. You see, he hides in that dark place. He's in the midst of it, working things out you have no idea about. He's doing, somebody says, I know what you're thinking. No, 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 Pastor, don't you know the scripture in 1 John? It talks about in chapter 1, verse 5, it says, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. That's right. He's a bright, shining light, so bright, so full of light that you and I can't look upon him. But the awesome thing is all throughout the word, we see that he wraps himself in the shadows. He wraps himself in the cloud. He wraps himself in dark clouds. And what is that? That's those places that we, you and I have to go through. He wraps himself up in there so that when you go through that dark place, you think you're walking in some fearful forest all by yourself, but you're not. Once you get in there, every anointed child of God finds out and discovers that the moment you trust and you walk in to that dark place, as soon as you get in there, the Holy Ghost in you will hope, hope, help you to open Open your eye and you'll see the glory of the Lord in the midst of the darkness. That's your treasure. He's always going to be there. We know that. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 10, it says, And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. Oh, can I just stop for a moment? 
I live for the day. The glory of the Lord fills this house, this sanctuary, because of the people of God, that we have come together in one mind and one heart, one for all and all for one. Unity fills this house so full, and our worship and our praise comes together as one before the throne, and the glory of the Lord fills this house until we can't even minister. I've been in services where I've had to drop the mic and just stand there and get down on my knees behind this pulpit. Lord, we are here and available for a move of God in the midst of the darkness out here in this world there is still a God who is on the throne he has not failed to be strong to be strong he's mighty he's omnipotent he's omnipresent and he is the God of every dark place you'll ever find yourself in wraps himself in the dark clouds. He wraps himself in the darkness of your life. I get excited about that. Because I know, man, I've seen some dark places. I've gone through some dark times. And when I look back over my life, I remember it was through those dark places that there was a revelation of him given to me like that I had never seen before. There was intimacy with him and there was worship with him. There was a presence with him I had never seen otherwise. I walked away from the cemetery just like you did. And I thought that was going to be the saddest day of my life. But I can tell you the joy comes after the weeping. He always comes through bringing treasures in the midst of of the darkness he's a god of, of his word and he will not fail you he will not fail to be there for you if you'll look to him right now as a matter of fact don't you feel him he's right here in the middle of this service he's tapping you on your heart's door and he's letting you know there is promises of treasures in the midst of the darkness if you will not fail to, to trust him and you will not give in to the enemy's discouragement you will not give in to the enemy's lies and deception if you will stand flat-footed as a child of God before the throne of God and declare to the enemy, get behind me, Satan. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I am a winner. And I have the prize. And it's right in front of me. Amen. Clouds, not Psalm 97, verses 1 through 6. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him, burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Do you know you're being set up this morning for a victory? You're being set up for, it's like you're, on, you're watching Pirates of the Caribbean and you just discovered the hidden treasure. God is in the middle of that dark place. You thought in your frustration that you were alone. You thought you'd have to just endure. You thought this was a time when you're going to have to walk in the dark. Honey, open your eyes in the midst of the darkness. There are treasures that are coming to you from every angle. God is in the midst of what you're going through. Amen. The second treasure is exactly that. It's a treasure of a new and wonderful revelation. Remember when Moses drew near to the mountain, when he, it says that the darkness, the lightning and the thundering, so much so that the children of Israel, Brother John, were afraid. They said, no, Moses, we, we don't want to go up there. You go talk to him. They were afraid of the mountain. They were afraid of the darkness around them. But Moses walked up, and when he got in that thick cloud of darkness, what happened? He not only found that God was there, but he also found a revelation. God is, is getting ready to speak something to you that you haven't heard and wouldn't hear otherwise. You, you've gone through that dark place. You've gone through that time of questioning. You've gone through that time of trouble. And because you have trusted him, you first found that he was there. Secondly, you will find that in it, there are going to be revelations for you. It was Moses who walked into that dark cloud and found the Ten Commandments. 
and found all kinds of other things. The Lord spoke to him privately as a friend. God spoke to him and revealed to him. Revealed to him. You know, God's wanting to reveal to you the jewels, the treasures that are in this dark place of your life. You know, uh, you go to a jeweler and you see some of the very expensive jewels. When you do, you see them, they lay them out on black velvet because in that, it makes the beauty of the jewel stand out. There's no distraction. It, it takes from it. You know, one of the reasons why we got these black chairs up in this choir loft was not because we were wanting to go, you know, we're not turning into an occult. It's because <laughs> online, when people were watching, we were noticing that the, the brown, the bleeds into the brown that bleeds into the rug this marvelous carpet that we have it just put you on notice we are getting rid of it as soon as we possibly can but it might be a while but we we got that because if you look online now now you, it, it, the, the people the singers they pop out and you, you can see them better it's like like a jeweler who puts his fine jewels out there. You, you want to put your best foot forward for the Lord. You want to make it easy for people. You want to make it so that they can, they can worship without distraction. And that's what this, this is doing. God wants to reveal to you. He wants to speak to you. But he's got to remove all the distractions of your life. And so sometimes he, he puts you in a dark place so that you'll seek him. Sometimes he puts you in a dark place so that you'll, you'll confront him. And you'll, you'll get on your face before him. And you'll, you'll check out your life. You'll examine, they, examine yourself and you'll, you'll lay before him prostrate. I've gone through difficult times. I remember as a young, young man when my mom had gone through a horrible situation where she had, she had lost a child and she, there was things going on physically inside of her and she was hemorrhaging and, and, and she was losing all kinds of weight and lost all kinds of blood. She was almost dead by the time we got her to the hospital not knowing what was going on. And I remember I was only about 12 or 13 years old and I remember that all, all I could think of was what my mama would do. And I went in the restroom at that hospital and I got in one of them little stalls and I started just seeking and praying God at 12 years old I started praying God asking him heal my mom please show the doctor what to do Lord I can't lose my mama I'm only 12 you got to heal her and you know what he brought her out of that but I know that in that dark season and in that time whenever we find ourselves there we'll find that that's the time that's the time Vicki when we got to serve the Lord when we got to seek God our faith is put to the test Elaine when we find ourselves needing to have faith for a healing and for a deliverance. And it's in those dark places you may regret them. You may not like them. They're uncomfortable and they don't feel too good. But if you'll embrace what God has allowed in your life, there are going to be treasures out of it that are going to bring revelation. It's going to bring secrets of the kingdom. It's going to bring an intimacy with God that you would not and could not have otherwise. Promises, treasures, revelation. All throughout the word, we see where these things were, were given to us. And then there's another treasure, something for you to understand about the dark place. Not only is God there, and not only is there revelations for you there, truth and intimacy with him, but there's also a work that's being done. It's said in that scripture, let's go back and look at it again. It says, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places. What is that? I begin to ask myself, Stuart, what is that? You've promised me treasures in the darkness. What's the, what's the secret? And the secret is, as you look back over every story in the word, you begin to analyze and look at it closely. You see that it was in that darkness. It was in the storm that God was performing the miracle. When Moses stood before the great Red Sea and he lifted up his arms, the Bible says, and all that night, let me read it, Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. I watched the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, and they did it during the daytime. 
So I naturally assume God works the miracles all come in the daytime. Miracles always come with the light. We're in the dark until the light comes on. When the light comes on, there will be the miracle. No, 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 here's the secret. In the middle of the dark time, Tim, in the middle of when you don't understand what's going on, right there, God is already ahead of you, and he's doing something. He's performing a miracle in the time when we're suffering, in the time when we're persecuted, in the time when we don't know what's going to happen next. It was Moses. He lifted up those arms, and it says, and all night long, so that by the time morning came, the, the Red Sea had already parted beautiful, and the, dry, the land was dry, and they were ready to walk through. God's doing something in the middle of the dark time. You're not waiting for a time to come. Don't do that. you got to look for him right now. Look for the miracle that's, being, that's happening right now. Right now, in the midst of your darkness, God is speaking into it. He's moving into it. The wind is blowing. The lightning is thundering. And you are all going, we're going through this, this hard time. But like the disciples on that boat in the, the night winds and the storm that was raging, when they woke him up, they'd thrown everything off the boat. And they were fearful for their lives, thinking they were surely going to perish and die. They said, Lord, don't you care that we're dying? He looked at them and he said, why do you have such little faith? Jesus was at rest because the darkness, the storm, the dark place was no worries for the Savior. How many of you know this morning? It's no worries for God now what you're going through. It's no worries. It's no stress on him. He's not panicked and nervous and needing an anxiety pill. He's not sitting on the throne wringing his hands wondering, talking to Gabriel, what are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. No, how many of you know God is God and he's on the throne. He knows exactly what's happening. He's got the minute. He's got the second down. He knows exactly when you're going to do your morning. It's going to turn to dancing. He knows exactly when you're weeping. It's going to turn to, to joy. And he knows the moment that you're going to walk out and be celebrating. He already has seen your dance before you've ever got there. God has already put, started the music playing for the celebration that's coming to your house. If you'll just stand this morning and say, God, in the midst of my dark time, in the midst of this, this confusion all around, I'm going to trust you in it all because there there are treasures in the dark place, secrets about your work that's being accomplished and done right in the middle of this dark place. I'm not going to wait for a time to come. I'm going to forget those things that are behind, and I'm going to press on towards the prize because it's right there. It's right there in front of us if we'll hold on and embrace the promises of God. The last treasure that I'll talk about this morning in closing, if Gary, you'll get ready. I want to speak about the souls. The souls in the balance. There's no way God's going to let you go through something and let, you, let it be a shame to your walk with Him. There's no way God's going to let you go through what you're going through and there not be a celebration that in it will be a wake of souls. God's going to save people. Your testimony is going to encourage people, inspire people. There are going to be lost souls come to God through this season of your darkness. I'm telling you, that is the truth. As sure as I'm alive here this morning, there are you. the Bible says you are an overcomer through your testimony. The testimony that you give is going to give others the confidence that if God did it for you, God's going to do it for me. If he did it for them, he'll do it for my family. God is a promiser, and he is a keeper of every promise. Do you believe that? Say amen. Sometimes God sends you into the darkness for others. They're bound up. They're in prisons. They're wrapped up in drug abuse, alcoholism, pornography, illicit relationships and immorality of every kind. That's why, as a pastor and as a youth pastor, I always carried an attitude, and I carry it with, with you, and I carried it with young people when I did that for 18 years. 
I will never, ever, ever give up on you. I will never mark you off my list. I will never write you down as a hopeless cause. I will never check you off and work with all the good kids. I'll never do that. I will chase you down. Because you know what I found out? The word tells me that the Lord will crash through every gate and brass and iron gate that stands between me and you and the promises of God and the power of God. He promises that he'll crush everything that's entrapped him, anything that's entrapped you. I'm not going to give up on anybody. I'm not going to walk out on anybody. If I've had one testimony out through the years from young people that have went on to do one of the, one of the young people that caused me more grief, she, she knows it. I'm not saying a word against her. She, she would laugh right now if she heard me, and she might be. She moved away. She lives in Florida. She literally, she gave me, I mean, she gave me what for? She took personal credit in all the gray hairs I had in my head. She, like, named them. These were hers. I'd find her on my doorstep early in the morning. She'd cry, and she'd, we'd work through situations, and we'd pray, and and then she'd get mad and she'd go off and, and I wouldn't know what she's doing. And then she'd call me and we'd, we'd talk. And sometimes she'd, she'd curse at me and sometimes she'd tell me to get lost and to quit. And I never did. She was mean. She persecuted me. She talked bad about me. She did all kinds of stuff. And you know what? I just kept loving her. Kept loving her. Because I knew she wasn't rejecting me. She was fighting against him. So my job as a pastor and as a leader was that I was going to support her. I was going to be there for her no matter what. And that was hard sometimes. It was a dark season. But in that dark season, and she gave me this part of my preaching this morning because I went to my office after first service. Sat down at my desk. And right across my phone, this same young lady that is leading worship teams of thousands today. Leading worship with her husband in a group down in Florida, thousands go to their church. Coming out with a brand new live CD of worship music and she texted me and she said, Dad, I was watching this morning about treasures out of darkness. And she said, I'm so thankful you never gave up on me. <laughs> treasures in the darkness she started going on about how she had been studying the book of John and she was doing this and she just preached to me and I said, I told her, I wrote her back, I said, I'm smiling right now getting ready to go out to service number two. I said, thank you for blessing me today. You don't know what you're fighting for. You don't know what your, str what your struggle is all about, but I guarantee you it's more than just for you. There's somebody else that's in it. If you'll stay the course, if you will fight the fight, if you won't give up the faith, if you'll stay true, God's got something for someone else, and it's going to be a treasure. Oh, do you, don't you think that text is a treasure? That's a treasure for me. I didn't get it for 10 years later. But, man, it's a treasure to me. God's got them for you. As a matter of fact, that was a fresh word for you this morning. So guess what that means? God don't send you a word unless he's doing it right now. He's fixing to move right now. The wind is blowing, but guess what? In the middle of all that wind, the treasures are getting ready to be discovered. God's going to start laying them out in front of you one by one. He will not allow you to live in disgrace or shame and be his child. The word says his seed will never be out begging for bread. In the name of Jesus, his children will never be out begging for bread, hungry and famished and disgraced. God's going to take care of you this morning. Stand with me. For I am here in great power, says the Lord. I have called you to greatness. I have called you to stand through the storms. I have called you to hold fast. And yet you say, where is the greatness, Lord? 
I am here today. I want to affirm and confirm my strength in your life, my calling upon your life. My riches are right before you. I have more than you will ever need. You need only trust in me, cling closely to my spirit, and know that I am leading you, says the Lord. Trust me in this season and watch what I do on behalf of the heavens and the promise that I have given to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands and honor the Lord this morning? Just honor the presence of God. If you're new to our church, we believe in the gifts and the gifts of interpretation and the gifts of, tr- of the gifts of tongues and interpretation. And we have experienced that in our congregation this morning. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that's here in our midst and he's doing a work. He wants to touch your life and he wants to transform and change your circumstance. God wants to do what he said is he's, what he said he's going to do. Some of you are here today and according to what we've just heard, you, you've had the promise of You've had the calling. You've had the work of God. But yet you've gone through this dark season and you feel like you're so alone. You feel you're surrounded by people, but you feel so alone. Oh, hold on, child of God. Hold on, anointed one. God is God treasures coming. If you'll trust in him and lean hard on him today, don't. Don't lean to the circumstances. Don't worry about what you don't see. Fly by the instrument panel. Trust the word of God. And he is going to move that mountain out of your way. And you are going to dance. You are going to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Trust in the Lord this morning. As you're here and every head is bowed, I would ask, before we ask for those that need to come to Jesus I would ask the church are you here today and you'd say pastor I'm going through that hard dark season and I want God to know I'm going to hold fast let me see your hand I'm going to hold fast I'm not giving in I'm not going to shut down I'm not about to let the devil win the prize is right before me and I'm going to hold to it Amen. Thank you. Are you here today and you'd say, Pastor, I don't have Jesus. I haven't prayed that prayer to receive him into my heart. I'm fighting all alone. And I want to fight with him. I want him to be the Lord of my battles. I want to trust him today. Are you here and you need Jesus? You need to pray a prayer to receive the Lord into your life. If you're here, would you just slip up your hand and write back down. We're going to pray with you today. God bless you, son. God bless you, sir. Is there anyone else? I need Jesus today. I don't want to leave without him. I want him in my heart. Is there anyone else? Anyone else at all? Wait just a moment. Thankful for these that have lifted their hands. We're going to pray that prayer first, and then I'm going to invite everyone down for a closing prayer. But we're going to pray a prayer that if prayed from your heart, it literally will change and transform your life. He promises that he's here right now. So he's going to change your life through this prayer. It isn't the prayer. It isn't magic. It isn't a formula. It's from your heart. If you pray this from your heart, God promises a change in your life. He's going to become the Lord of your life. So I want you to pray it with me and everyone else. If you would, let's pray this together. We like to escort our people right to the throne of God. Let's pray right now. Would you help me? Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead. You purchased my salvation with your blood. And I accept you today. Be the Lord of my life. So according to your precious word, that simple prayer as a confession And a belief in my heart means I'm saved. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you come? I'd like everyone, as many as can, if you'd step out and meet me in the altar, we're going to pray together.
about these dark seasons in our lives where you may not be going through it, but you might be going, getting ready to. Maybe you've come through it and you're ready to be used of God. I want you to come and let's agree with our brothers, our sisters. Some are going through it now and they need your support. So we come together. Would you just lift up your hands right here in the altar? There's no reason to wait. Let's just believe the Lord. Lord, there are many here today going through that dark time. I pray in the name of Jesus, you would touch their circumstance and situation. Help them to see that in the darkness, Lord, they need only hang on. They only need to fly by faith. They only need, God, to continue marching forward for you are in the midst of the dark time. You're there with them now. You're going to perform a wonderful miracle. You're doing that now. You're working in the midst of the dark season now. And, Lord, we thank you for that. There are treasures in here for us. There are treasures in the darkness. And I thank you for it. God, empower your people. Touch them today. Strengthen them by your Holy Spirit and let the work of God be done and accomplished. We'll never fail, Lord, to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. For, Lord, we're going to shout now because we know our victory has already been won. The battle has already been won. And we are the victors in the name of Jesus Christ. And by his power, by his strength in us, Lord, we are more than conquerors. We give you honor and we give you praise for it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. Why don't you spend some time in praise? We're praising the Lord. We're thanking the Lord that he has heard us, that he's met with us, and that his power is at work in our lives. Amen? Amen. You believe him for a healing. You believe him for a healing. You believe him for deliverance. You believe him for provision. You believe him because he's God every need. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Come back tonight for our Vacation Bible School program. It's going to be awesome, and you might want to come a little bit early because grandmas, grandpas, aunts, and uncles take over the place, and so you want to be here tonight and be early. God bless you.